Our greeting to all of our parishioners and to all those who are visiting is taken from our mission statement. Our Eucharistic community at Holy Cross welcomes all to faith in Jesus Christ. As we pass the midpoint of Advent and begin to look to our celebration of the Incarnation, it would be good to take some extra quiet moments each day, place ourselves in Christ's presence, and reflect on the day to see and reflect on the day to see where Christ has been present to us in countless ways. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Reef. Please join in the entrance hymn, number 487, Rejoice, the Lord is King. Good morning, everyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Coming together in love now on this third Advent Sunday, uh, we have Kathy and Caitlin uh, Stahovic lighting our Advent wreath. The three candles now for the three weeks of Advent. So we thank them for doing the lighting and we enter into the spirit of this third Sunday, which is called Gaudete Sunday, meaning rejoice because uh, the time between now and Christmas is indeed very, very close, very near. We take a moment now to repent of sin and ask God's forgiveness and mercy. Please join me on page nine. I confess to oh, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned sin in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through and my fault, through my fault, through my, my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Christ, 
faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity. Help us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad tidings. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our book is here for the children's liturgy. We welcome them. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will enter Zion singing. Crowned with everlasting joy, they will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, come and save us. Lord, come and save us. The Lord God keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, Gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets captives free. Lord, come and save us. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. 
The Lord protects strangers. Lord, come and save us. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations. Lord, come and save us. A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruits of the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and late rains. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
John the baptizer had been arrested. He had truly been a prophet, speaking the word of God, the word that was not received by the king very well, who had him in prison for speaking the word of God. He also knew that as a prophet, he had to point a way to the Messiah. And so in jail, he called his disciples. And he said, go and ask this question. Are you the one who is to come, or should we wait for another? Now John knew who Jesus was. He had baptized him. He had seen the Holy Spirit come upon him. And he knew that he was the Messiah. But as one who wanted to lead his disciples to Jesus, he wanted them to go and to experience Jesus so that they might truly believe in him. And so they went off and they asked that question. And it's interesting to note how Jesus responded. He didn't say, yes, I am the Messiah and you better believe in me. He didn't say, I am the Son of God. He just said very humbly, very meekly, go tell John. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, leopards are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised to life. He wanted to respond to their question in a way that they would completely understand, first of all, that he was the prophet who had been, uh, who had been foretold to come into the world. And if you think about the first reading of today's Mass, those were the words of Isaiah, speaking about the one who would come, that he would give the blind their sight, he would take away lameness, he would heal people. And that is what Jesus was doing at that, that very moment. And so therefore the disciples recognized that. But second of all, he really wanted to tell him about what his mission was to this world as the Son of God made flesh. His, verse, his job was to bring forth the, the concept that we would understand that our God is merciful, loving, kind, healing, forgiving, that our God has a special love for each and every one of us. For that was the mission of Jesus, and that was his mission statement. I heal, I forgive, I love. And so therefore they went back, being impressed and knowing the Messiah who had come into the world. And he went on to talk about John to the rest of the people that were there. What did you go out in the desert to see? A weed, say, a reed sprayed by the wind? Did you go out to see someone fancy dressed? No, you went out to see a prophet. For truly that was what John was. But then he goes on and says, John was the greatest of all the prophets. No man born of woman has the greatest standing of John. For he was the be that transitional prophet who would come into the world to close out the old covenant and to show forth the way to the new covenant. And he said, even though John is so great, he is least of all in the kingdom of God. Meaning that he would die before he would experience the fullness of the Messiah's love. That he would never come on this earth to see that Jesus not only came into this world to love and to heal and to forgive, but to give his life for us by dying on the cross so that we would be healed from sin and that we would be made ready to enter the kingdom of God. And so therefore, each of us must thank God for our blessings, that we are greater in John, than John because we live in the new covenant and we have experienced the everlasting love of God. We know that Jesus died for each and every one of us, that he loves us, and that he touches us and heals us and brings his love to us in a multitude of ways, and that we should rejoice. And the celebration of Christmas is that celebration. The Mass starts off with the words, Rejoice, because we have been touched by the birth of Christ. Now we know that Jesus, died, Jesus came into the world 2,000 years ago. And certainly we're celebrating the fact that he came into the world. But Christmas is much more than that. It's much more than celebrating what has happened in history. It is celebrating what is happening today in the hearts of each of us. 
It is celebrating the love that God has for each of us. It is celebrating the way he touches us and heals us and loves us. And so therefore, I'd ask you to spend this time in preparation for Christmas by entering into a deeper reality of God's love for you. To enter into a reality that God touches us and heals us. One of the ways that we can do that is through the sacrament of penance. And tomorrow we have a very special opportunity for that sacrament, where we're going to have an afternoon and evening of the confession or reconciliation or penance, whichever you'd like to call it. So from 4 o'clock to 5.15, <laughs> we'll have six priests available for the sacrament of penance. And then we're going to have a mass in which we'll use a special Eucharistic prayer, the Mass of Reconciliation. And then from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock, we'll have the uh, three of us hearing penance, hearing confession, and celebrating with you. And you might be sitting there saying, oh my God, does he know how long it's been since I went? What do you do now? How do you go to confession? How do you do, oh my God, you know. And yet we prepared for that. We're at 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 7 o'clock. We'll have kind of a refresher course down in the parish center of how to go to confession. And we'll pray a little bit. We'll have an opportunity for you to leave your little ones that maybe not a confession age if you want to down there while you go to confession. We'll have coffee and hot chocolate and things that we can kind of celebrate what we are doing, the love of God, the forgiveness of God, You know, one of the biggest problems that we have is that we get weighted down by our sins, that our sins take a toll. Now, it doesn't have to be big sins. You don't have to be a murderer. You don't have to do those things to experience the love and the forgiveness of God. But from those little everyday things that all of a sudden build up and become a great weight in our life, maybe our uncharitableness, our anger, whatever it may be, we need to take a step back and let the loving Jesus forgive us so that we can come forth anew to celebrate Christmas without being weighed down by the past and looking forward to the gifts of Jesus in the future. And so the sacrament of reconciliation is a very great gift that Jesus has given us. And there are other times to do that this week, uh, our ordinary times of Saturday and then before Christmas. But tomorrow will be a very special time, a very good time to come, a time where Jesus will reach out and touch us and to give us the fullness of his blessing and to set us free from the baggage of yesterday that we might live in his love today. For one of the things that we must do in celebrating Christmas is recognizing the goodness of ourselves, that we are loved by God, that we are a creation of God, that God has touched us and blessed us, and that we are special. And then to see that the whole concept of the word becoming flesh, Christ walking upon this earth, was not just limited to him bringing the Father's love to us, but that he commissioned us to go out and to do the same thing, that each of us can bring the love of God to each other, that each of us can see the goodness of God in one another, that each of us can treat each other as Christ. For that is the way that we make Christmas come alive. And there are many ways that we can do that. I know that you all have lists of Christmas cards either sent or coming. You know, I don't have mine done yet, but you know, some of you people do. But when you write a Christmas card, say a prayer for the person that you're writing it to. Think about them. Think about their kindness and love. Why am I sending them a card? Or perhaps it's you already sent yours out. Do it when you get one from them. Why is this person so special that they are sending me a card? What is that bond of love between us? And pray for them. Or perhaps it's in decorating the tree and when we put the tinsels on, if you still do that in this day and age, or the bulbs or the lights, every time that you put one on, think about that as a sign of the blessing of God in your past life. Think about that. And as you place this blue bulb on, Think about those are the blessings that come to you from your family. When you put the red, think that's the blessing that comes to you because of your spouse. When you put the green on, think about the blessing of your parents. And so on and so forth like that. So that the tree not only is well decorated, 
but the tree has a deep meaning of our spiritual relationships with others. If you do go out and shop when you're behind a present, and you get that, oh, that perfect present for Aunt Mamie, nobody else is going to think of giving her that, and she's going to be so happy. Also accompany that as you wrap it with your prayer for her. Because the greatest gift that we can give is the gift of prayer and pray for that person. There are many ways that we can make Christmas come alive and make it truly a celebration of Christ among us, but we have to do that. And that is the way that we truly will go through this period rejoicing. Oh, not another gift to buy, another card that came in the mail, what do I do with it? It's the whole idea that these are all blessings. These are all seeing God's love and our opportunity to love God in our very real life and doing that in a way that we rejoice because we are celebrating Christ among us. There is one other way that I'm going to suggest is instead of going out to the mall this afternoon and buying that one last present or that 10 last presents or that 50 last presents, whatever it may be, or instead of trying to straighten out the key tree, let's see, I think that we need two more red bulbs on that side and a green one on this side, and we need a little, uh, you know, instead of doing that, come here and listen to our choir. They will certainly put us in the spirit of Christmas. They and the bell choir will make us relax and rejoice that Jesus is with us. So start our celebration today in that very special way so that all of us will find reason this Christmas to rejoice. Keeping in mind now our message from, from Father Wheeland about all this important putting first things first and not worrying about the details. In that spirit now, we put the articles of our faith very much up front and center. What do we believe? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and then for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Keeping in mind the great mystery of Jesus coming in history, as we look toward his coming at the end of time, we now take the present moment to offer our petitions to God the Father. For Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they continue to be signs of faith to all people of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as we commemorate the first anniversary of the tragedy at Newtown, we remember the victims and their families. We pray for an end to violence and hate and that peace will be felt in hearts of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that through the graces of Advent, 
we may grow in the virtues of faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all police officers, firefighters, emergency medical personnel, and for those who are presently serving in our armed forces, that God will protect them as they serve to protect us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord our God will lift the burdens of those who suffer from illness of the mind and body. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will know Christ's coming as they celebrate life with him forever, especially Edna Lum, William Raymond, and for Mary, Mary Mercandetti, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of us all, the time draws closer each day now toward the celebration of your Lord's arrival. Help us to truly be prepared as that day comes and to be prepared every day of our lives for that second coming of his, which is so shrouded in mystery, but which is part of the dynamic of what he has done and will do for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our second collection today is for Holy Cross School. Please join in the offertory hymn, number 317, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
brothers that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of the Lord. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplished for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation so that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. So that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by which by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself granted we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an offering, an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope. Salvatore, our bishop designate. Robert, our administrator, Matthew, our bishop emeritus, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the religious and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. Peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant peace, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Father, we have in our midst today individuals seeking entrance into our Catholic faith. Candidates and catechumens, please come forward. Because they are not yet able to fully share in the meal of the Lord, they will be dismissed to go to another place to continue to reflect on the word of God as spoken to us in today's scriptures. They ask that you keep them in your prayers. My dear friends, this community now sends you forth to reflect more deeply upon the word of God which you have shared with us today. Be assured of our loving support and prayers for you. We look forward to the day when you will share fully in the Lord's table. Go in peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Now let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Would any minister of communion planning to take the Eucharist to a sh sick or shut-in person please come to the altar at this time? One of the announcements that we'll hear in a few minutes has to do with a wonderful event here at 3 today with our beautiful Christmas concert. In the spirit of that, let's give our awesome choir a hand here. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. All are invited to the Holy Cross Choir Christmas Concert today at 3 p.m. in the church. Let music get you into the Christmas spirit with carols and anthems featuring the choir and the handball choir with guests from the Eastman School of Music. There will be refreshments afterward. Join us this Monday, December 16th, as we prepare for Christmas by celebrating the healing sacrament of penance. Individual confessions will be heard from 4 p.m. to 5.15, and then again from 6 till 8 p.m. following the Mass of Reconciliation at 5.20. There are sign-up sheets in the parish center foyer for you to help at our Christmas Masses in several ways please consider being a part of this very special liturgy. Seniors and friends will gather this Thursday at 1.30 p.m. to celebrate Christmas. There are petitions for you to sign at all of the entrances of the church opposing the reconfiguration of Lake Avenue down to one lane near the cemetery. The Cub Scouts are having their holiday bake sale this weekend after all masses in the parish center foyer. We still have some tags remaining on our giving tree for you to consider. Where is Santa? Check out this weekend's teen Christmas gathering 
1 to 3 p.m. this Sunday in the Holy Cross Convent. Bring a treat to share and enjoy pizza and games. Everyone should bring a wrapped grab bag gift, no more than $5. All are welcome and bring a friend. Let's see if we can find Santa. We ask that you see the bulletin for details on how to complete the diocesan survey on pastoral changes, challenges to the family. This survey must be completed by midnight on Sunday. Tweens, teens, and families are invited to bring holiday cheer to the residents of Shore Winds Nursing Facility with caroling on Monday evening, December 16th. Please see the bulletin or website at holycrossrochester.org for these and all parish details. And be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. There will be a co coffee hour after mass in the parish center. Please help us to decorate the tree in the parish center while you're enjoying your coffee and donut. Our recessional hymn will be number 326, Comfort, Comfort, O My People. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go out rejoicing that the Lord is coming again.